Uh, what is your approach to spiritual gifts? Um, what is my approach to spiritual gifts? Uh, uh, oh, sorry, there was a second part of that. I don't know that I have one, and I've been praying for one a really long time. Okay, okay. You know what? It, de it depends on your definition of spiritual gift, most likely. I'll bet you you do have one, and you just haven't recognized it. So generally speaking, when people are talking about the spiritual gifts, they're, they're talking about a list that you find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so it, it talks about words of knowledge and words of wisdom and uh, the, the gifts of miracles and the gifts of healings and the gift of tongues and uh, things like that. But if you look over in Romans chapter 12, in verse 6 it says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, and that's God speaking through you, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. And that's kind of a miraculous gift. And so you might have a problem with it, with that. Or ministry. The word ministry there is service. And it just means serving people. And so you may have the gift of serving people. I know that, that that's one that God gave me. I, I like to serve people. In fact, I like, I like to do things behind the scenes rather than out in front. And, and so that's, that's what most of my ministry was before I became a teacher. And that's the next list, uh, next uh, uh, gift in the list. He who teaches in teaching, and so you, have the, you can have the gift of teaching. He who exhorts or encourages in exhortation. And this, might, this is one that a lot of people have and they don't recognize it. They're, they're just going around blessing people like crazy because they're so encouraging and they're, they're spurring people on in that kind of way. And they don't even recognize that they're exercising a spiritual gift. It says, he who gives with liberality. So there's a gift of giving. And, and so I've known some people that have that gift. It's like they'll give you the shirt off their back. They'll give you, your, you know, their, their last meal. They'll, they'll do all kinds of things for you. And they give, give, give. And, and sometimes it just becomes crazy. You have to tell them, stop giving me things. He who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy. Mercy is, uh, is the idea of being um, uh, uh, kind of, when I think of mercy, I think of soup kitchens, helping out in a soup kitchen um, with cheerfulness, and then the passage goes on. So I'll bet you, you are moving in one of those areas, and you may recognize it now, and you didn't realize that that was a spiritual gift. And so there's a number of passages that talk about this. So Romans 12 is one, 1 Corinthians 12 is another, and Ephesians chapter 4 is another. In the Old Testament, you even have God giving gifts to men that have to do with craftsmanship. And so it talks about specific gifts that were given to guys so that they could uh, craft the tabernacle. And so the, the whole idea of uh, spiritual gifts goes way beyond 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is, is the point that I'm making here. And so, um, yes, you do have a gift. It's just recognizing what that gift is. And it's the area that God's going to have you moving uh, in, uh, in the body. And so exhortation can be a gift of counseling, for example. And, uh, you know, just being, again, able to spur somebody on. So. And you can pray for those gifts because uh, mm -hmm. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, but earnestly desire the best gifts. And so exactly. if you put, have something on your heart, you know, you can pray for that. Yep. You can pray for prophecy. You can pray for the gift of teaching. You can pray for whatever you want.